Hello and welcome back to Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus. Tonight I'm going to be working on a subscriber's request and one of my subscribers asked that I make or make a tutorial on how to make placemats. So that's what we're going to be doing tonight. If you'd like a copy of the software that I use for all my designs, please contact me on my Facebook uh, page which is either Harriet Holmes or you can con uh, contact me on my business page which is Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus. Um, message me, inbox me, and then I will inbox you the, the link to download the software instantly and also give you the, the um, sheet that will show you exactly how to install it. It's a really old software so it's kind of temperamental and that you need to install it exactly as the directions that I'll be inboxing you will tell you to do and then you can follow along with all of my tutorials so we're going to go ahead and get started right now I have just a blank page here and I was looking up the sizes for placemats and the average sizes were 11 by 15 inches or 11 by up to 11 by 17 inches so seeing that two sheets of your average paper um, and the letter uh, size paper comes out to 11 by 17 inches I'm going to be using two um, letter shapes letter size shapes and I'm going to put them together in portrait position to make our master for the placemat so let's do that now what I'm going to do I'm going to go to file new and it's already in portrait position so I'm going to go ahead and hit done next I'm going to go to cut out and picture add a colored shape and I'm going to leave that shape blue for now I'm going to take that shape click on it with my left mouse button and I'm going to drag it all the way up into my top left corner then I'm going to drag until drag toward the right until it's filled in all the way to this right corner and then I'm going to drag from the middle to bring it all the way down so that I get the perfect size square which will be eight and a half and eleven inches or a full sheet of, of uh, letter format paper so now I'm going to click back on my blank here my my blank sheet and I'm going to left click and on the rectangle that I just made the blue rectangle drag one in I'm going to left click on it again and drag it up and drop it in my blank sheet next I'm going to go to size and position alignment guides and I'm going to click on horizontal guide because I want to get these two on an even plane so that I can join them so I'm just going to drag this down slowly until it clicks and latches on to that uh, horizontal guide and do the same with this one on the right and I'm going to slowly bring them toward each other oops went down a little bit slowly bring them toward each other until all of the white is has disappeared between them now I'm just going to click and drag from the left corner down to the right corner and I'm going to hit this little puzzle piece to join the two pieces so this is going to be our blank for using to make the placemats so I'm going to drag this up and I'm just going to resize it in this page and don't worry about that little white showing up it's just doing that because I'm resizing it as you can see it disappeared the minute I let go and I'm going to just kind of center this I'm going to go to special effects shadow and I'm going to put a soft shadow around it because I'm going to change this inner portion to white so that we will just have the blank from which to build our placemat so I'm going to go here to paint and color effects click on fill with a solid color which is the red star and then I'm going to click in the white area with my dropper so that it will change <coughs> excuse me so they will change the inside area to white and I'm going to click done so this is going to be the master for all of our placemats that we'll make from now on and I'm going to go ahead and save this actually I've already saved it on mine as placemat master so in order to save it you can just go to file save as 
you want to keep it in picture it format because if you do then you can change it um, up to or change anything about it that you want to change or you can save it as a JPEG and then you would just need to cut away the edge when you make your design so I saved it as both I saved it under picture it and I also saved it as a JPEG so now this is going to be the shape we're going to use I'm gonna go ahead because I don't wanna waste time opening up the JPEG that I saved I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this one out because when you do a cut like this it automatically turns it into a JPEG file and I'm going to you don't have to do this because you'll just open up your master and I'm gonna go ahead and delete the bottom one the bottom one that was joined because that will make the um, that might make our application close itself up without you wanting it to later on so the smaller the file the less less uh, technical this this shape is then the easier it will be to design so now uh, the first placement I'm going to make I'm going to base it on Toy Story this is going to be um, what I call a play on placemat which means it's going to be kind of like the ones they give children at restaurants so um, I looked on Google and I found I, I typed in a uh, Toy Story background and it showed lots of different backgrounds but I chose this one that has Toy Story written on it and I'm just going to click on my shape here and I'm going to go to cut out and pictures fill cut out and picture I'm gonna click on the Apple which means I'm gonna uh, change this to a different background and I'm just gonna click on the Toy Story with the left mouse button and drop it in the middle of my placemat so that looks just about perfect I'm gonna take it down a little bit more by clicking on any corner and I'm, which helps me to keep my proportions correct and now that's I think just fine right there I'm gonna click done now you can change this to um, I'll change it to say Harriet's Toy Story birthday party just using my own name so I'm gonna this I could go and find the the text for Toy Story and crop out the letters I need but I'm just gonna do a quick way of do, that I do um, if I find a font that's pretty similar to this and they have one here it's Arial um, so I'm gonna click A in that box and I'm gonna go down to Arial black and it's kinda chunky like that when I'm gonna change the color to yellow by clicking on more color choices and it brings up this color wheel and you see my dropper so wherever I hit my dropper it's going to change the text to that color I want it yellow and then I'm going to click done I'm going to go here to apply special effect add uh, highlight the text edge I'm going to choose this one which is the third choice because you can choose not to have an edge a, a kind of see-through uh, fuzzy edge this is the solid edge and once again a lighter fuzzy edge but I want the solid edge because I wanted to kind of mimic this text so now I'm going to go in to customize the edge I'm going to click the color wheel and I'm going to change that edge highlight to this blue around the word toy I'm going to click done just once and then I'm going to drag my slider all the way over to 100 which is all the way to the right so that you can see that it makes the highlighted edge thicker and I'm gonna click done to back out of that I'm gonna click done one more time it brings me back to click an option click done again and now we're back to the text so I'm going to type in all caps since this is all caps Harriet's click done 
and then I can resize this or move it wherever I want and I think that's just fine right there and now I'm just going to duplicate this writing so that I don't have to go through all the changing of the colors I'm just going to left click on this go here to the top in your toolbar and right next to the, to the scissors there there's the copy icon I'm going to click copy one time and then I'm going to click paste it's going to make a new text box which is a duplicate of the first one Harriet's now I clicked on it to show that to make it show that I can manipulate it now by putting the quadrant markers around it I'm going to right click choose edit text and then I'm going to say Harriet's Toy Story birthday bash And just because the edge of the red box around story is slanted, I'm going to slant birthday bash. And I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. And you could put the age of the person, third, fourth, whatever. Um, but I'm just going to leave it like that for now. I just wanted to show you how you can mimic fonts that you see. Um, and it still looks nice even though it's not this exact font okay next I'm going to start adding games because this is going to be what I call the play on placemat which means they'll have games and things that they can do to play on using this this placemat so I already did my Google search to find everything that I wanted to use and I'll switch to it and I'll show you some of the ones I chose um, I chose what you normally see when you go to a restaurant spot the difference I chose a tic-tac-toe game, tic-tac-toe game, um, a maze for Toy Story that actually had the characters. And basically, to do your searches on the internet, you can find just about anything you're looking for and any theme you're looking for. All I did was type, um, sometimes, most of the time I type high res, but in this case, I came, it showed some high, pretty high res ones anyway but I would type high res Toy Story maze or Toy Story um, coloring pages Fortnite coloring pages Fortnite um, there was one more I looked up oh spot the difference so this is the Fortnite spot the difference this is the Toy Story spot the difference so now I'm gonna start with the maze so I'm gonna go back to my master which is the master for the placemat and I'm going to left click on the sheet where I saved all the pieces different pieces that I might want to use and I'm going to click the maze for the Toy Story uh, placemat that I'm making and I'm going to drag it and drop it right in this corner now I, I didn't want that white edge around it and most of the time when you see them at the restaurant they'll have an extra edge around it which will unify all the pieces that I want to put on here so I'm going to just go to cut out and picture a colored shape I'm going to change that color let me move this over a little bit I want to change it to this blue so I'm going to click on more color choices it gives me my dropper and I'm going to click inside of this edge on Toy Story oops I hit the blue the black okay so I, it turned it to the exact blue of the border around the Toy Story font so I'm gonna click done I'm going to bring this up and place it over the top of my my maze here and then I'm going to click on that shape and just drag it down one layer and now I'm just going to resize this so that it just shows just a little border as you can see I'll zoom in a little bit and you can see it just shows a little border around and I want to try to make that the same all the way around so I could either do it like this or I can take this white edge off and I think I'll do that I'm going to open up a new sheet and I'm going to drag that onto it by left clicking and dragging it up 
I'm going to go ahead and cut out by color. I'll show you once again. I wanted to cut out in picture, cut out of picture, and I'm going to choose by color selection. I'm going to take this all the way down to zero because I just want this white edge. And then I'm going to click in between his boots and get all the white or at least most of the white from around his boots in between Buzz Lightyear's arm and that looks good right there so I'm going to go ahead and hit next I'm going to select opposite area I'm going to click to put it in its own box or put it in its own picture and I'm going to click done and it's going to open it up all by itself in its own picture so now I want the uh, instead of putting that blue box around it like I had it here I'm just going to cut this box from around it and make that box blue so I'm going to go to cut out in picture cut out of picture by color once again I'm going to take it down this time just to one because this is not a solid color you can see it's kind of little different gradients in it so I'm going to take it down to one and you can see it picks up more of those shades that are in that edge and don't forget to click down here by Buzz's legs and by the boot because we want that whole little edge around the maze I'm going to click next I'm going to take my check mark out because I do want this edge to say stay on the same page and I'm going to hit done so now I'm going to go back to my placemat I'm going to take that maze away but I'm going to save that box because I can use it for another one and I'm going to drag this maze up and as you can see now the white border is gone I'm going to resize it I think it looks better like that I'm going to hit the puzzle piece so that I can change this edge now I'm going to change this edge to the right color I was just showing you it was there now I'm going to hit undo to put it back where it goes and it, now that I have that edge chosen I'm going to go to paint and color effects fill with a solid color and I'm going to once again go into that blue or I can click here because that's the same blue and it'll change it to the blue so that everything will look uniform now I'm going to go ahead and group those again by dragging from the top left corner and grouping it so now I'm going to make that a little bigger leave it in that corner next I'm going to put what do I want to put on next I think I'll put the the um, tic-tac-toe I'll put tic-tac-toe on next so I'm going to drag this tic-tac-toe up to the corner and drop it right in this box. I'm going to make it a little bigger and try to have about the same size edge all the way around. So those edges are good. So I just need to pull this side in some. And I can leave some of that out. I'm going to pull this down a little bit and then I'm going to leave some of this edge at the top so that I can type the name tic-tac-toe and I'm going to change this to yellow so that it will match our board our whole theme here and then I'm going to go to text add text it's going to give me the same yellow that I originally chose and I'm just going to type tic-tac-toe tic-tac-toe I'm going to move it up here right above the game shrink it down a little bit by clicking on any corner and I'm just going to drop it right there but I think I'm going to change it to red so that we'll stay in the same color schemes of our setup here And because I want to just have the blue edge, I'm going to go ahead and add a colored shape. I'm going to make it white. And I'm just going to drag that white shape here on the right side down under the yellow. Then I'll move it all the way in. And I'm going to line it up so that 
my border on this will be about the same as the border on my maze over there so I'm just bringing it down and evening and evening it up around the edge of my tic-tac-toe and then I'll resize my tic-tac-toe a little bit too so that it's not touching the edges and just to make this stand out a little more I'm going to duplicate it and then I'm going to change this one color to blue so I'm going to go to paint and color effect click on paint and color effects fill with a solid color and I'm going to come back into that blue I think I'll leave it on top because I like the way that it stands out now so I'm just going to leave some of the yellow showing and some of the blue the yellow is going to be like a shadow behind the blue and now we're done with the tic-tac-toe so I'm going to shrink the tic-tac-toe down a little bit because it doesn't have to be that big and I'm going to put my coloring page right there underneath the tic-tac-toe so I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to find my coloring page it's right here and I'm going to switch it back to my placemat I see my woody right there and I'm going to pull him out and he's cut kind of odd but I don't want it like that I want it to have a solid square of white around it so I'm just going to go to cut out and picture a colored shape I'm going to change that shape to white and do the same thing I'm going to drag it behind that picture and just bring it over and make that into a perfect square just like that and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to group this picture and I'm going to add one of these blue backgrounds to it just like I did for that one so I'm going to make another colored shape I'm going to change it to the blue that I want hit done and done again and then I'm going to drag that underneath Woody and Buzz and give it the border as well so that they all will have a uniform border this border can be a little smaller so I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can get it exactly where I want it I'll just bring it in from this side all right that's about right that will work and I'm going to once again group that into one picture And last, what, what did I have on the page? Oh, I had the spot the difference. So I'm going to left click on the page where I have all the little pieces stored. I'm going to click on the spot the difference for Toy Story. And I'm going to drag it in. Resize it a little bit. and I'm going to do once again one of these boxes so that everything will be uniform make it the color that I want it click done done and drag that underneath zoom in a little so that I can resize that edge And all this does is just make it look like it was actually 
supposed to be all on this page together. It ties all of the decorative elements in with one another. And then I'm going to take this one, this uh, border down some, and I'll put spot the difference there. So I'm going to just drag up spot the difference, resize it, and I can make that yellow or red to go with the rest of the design. Let's see what it looks like red. I think I might like it. Let's see what it looks like yellow. I think I like it yellow better. So I'm going to shrink that down a little bit. And now we have the spot the difference game. And so now you have your play placemat. with four games you if you'd like you can find another small game to put in this area but I think this one works really well I'm gonna increase the coloring page so that it will be easier to color the bigger it is the easier it'll be to color and we have our first placemat so I'm gonna go ahead and save this save as and this is going to be Toy Story. Toy Story placement. And click save. All right. So now I want to print this picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to once again divide it in two pieces so I can put it back together to make my place back. So I'm going to go to new and I want to keep it in this portrait format. And all I'm going to do is drag this place back up into this shape. I'm going to put go to size and position alignment grid and I'm going to put a horizontal line here at the bottom because I want to slide this over and but I want both the pages to line up correctly when I put them back together so I'm going to bring this down all the way down to this horizontal guide I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to drag this page up until it just about fills a page because I want a little overlap so I'm gonna put it right there and now I'm gonna save this as a JPEG so I'm gonna go to file save as and change this to the desktop and I'm going to change it to JPEG and I'm going to say toy mat one and I'm going to save that next I'm just going to click here and just slide it to the other side and as you can see I slid it and kept it on this line so then when I print it out they will still be in alignment. They should still have the same amount at the top and bottom as I have here. So I'm going to save this as file save as. I'm going to change this by clicking on this down arrow. I'm going to scroll down to JPEG. And then so that I don't have to keep typing it over and over again, I'm going to click on ToyMat1 but don't click save yet we're going to change this to two and now we're going to click save next I'm going to go into my file manager to the desktop I'm going to scroll down to those two pictures and send them to my printer
There they are. So I'm going to click or I can drag across to both of them. Right click, click, check, click print. Sorry about that. And now I'm going to send them to the printer and I have it set up to go to my EcoTank 2650 and it's on plain paper, high quality, and I'm going to click print. And once those are finished printing, it says it's offline. I think it is offline. So I'm going to go and turn it on and then I'm going to click print. Once I have these printed, then I'll be back. Here is the finished placemat. I ended up uh, changing up and I printed it on my HP printer instead on glossy photo paper. This is a soft gloss photo paper so that it would print full page so there would be nothing to trim off. So I printed it. I put tape, the tape that's shown below from the just the dollar store right down the center of the right the sheet on the right and overlapped it's overlapped right on the O all the way down but you can't really see it because the HP prints very well and now you have a finished placemat you can see the gloss and I did it on the gloss paper so that I wouldn't have to um, laminate if you use like a cardstock or regular paper you would need to laminate it in case water or some type of liquid spills on it whenever I use my HP printer on the correct settings for glossy photo paper it becomes waterproof for me so I'm not sure whether that's a rarity but um, whenever I, I use the photo paper on either my Epson or the um, the HP it becomes waterproof so if you want to try yours out print it out and then what I normally do to test it out I just drop a printed photo on the photo paper inside of a glass of water I usually put it in the fridge just in case they want to add ice to it uh, uh, my customers want ice added to it when I make water bottles and things like that and I leave it in there for quite a while and see if the color changes and it's been waterproof each time I've checked so that's the completed project I'll be making some others to show you how to make more elegant ones in future tutorials but this is a themed one to show you how to set up the play on play mat which is the name that I just gave it Thank you once again for watching Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus. Please remember to hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe and also hit the bell if you'd like to be notified immediately when I upload new videos. Feel free to share this with your friends and family who are interested in learning how to make supplies for parties, custom supplies. And once again, thank you for stopping by.